This is a watercolor painting of Shannon from life done in two three hour sessions. The painting is on watercolor paper 12 by 16 arches 140 pound in the fine texture. Um, take a look at the layering effect where keeping the translucent quality of watercolor consistent so that we see multiple layers of color coming through laid on top of each other where you can cool a color you can warm a color. Alright, this video is really not about drawing, but drawing is a critical part of the whole process. So, do take your time. Draftsmanship is draftsmanship, and certainly with watercolor, if you have a relatively accurate enough sketch to work with, it, it, it certainly is helpful in giving confidence in laying the different washes. So, spend your time, get the drawing correct, if you will, enough of a framework so that when you start laying the watercolor you, you don't have to worry too much about uh, where you're placing it and if you're covering up the wrong thing. As you know, watercolor is a difficult medium to change regularly. So there's the drawing is complete, now we're laying in the first wash. I like to do wet and wet, which, well, it's really not wet and wet, it's, it's really a dry paper, but, but I use a lot of water when I'm laying in the wash so that I can have uh, take advantage, if you will, of the natural inclination of watercolor, which is the blend itself. I mean, we do want to sort of take advantage of the principle of the accidents, if you will. I mean, this is still a very controlled uh, session. Um, it's not just throwing the pigment on there. And what you what you don't see in in uh, I did find that I thought this color was a, a little bit strong, so after the first session, I went ahead and uh, washed out some of the color and came back. And you can do that before, while the while the paper is wet and the pigment is still wet on the paper, you you can take additional water and literally just wash it off. I'm not showing that, but you'll see it in the next segment that's kind of what happens. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding lots of warm colors, uh, some general, uh, maybe some cool hues in, in the shadow areas, and just let it blend. Let it just blend naturally. Not being too concerned about precise details at this point, but just letting watercolor do its own thing, if you will, and getting out of its way. This video is shot at about 16 times the speed, so this is quite quite a bit faster than what I would actually be doing on site. Again, I'm keeping things kind of loose. I'm, I'm just looking at the model and just sort of indicating where I see some of the change in color and the chroma and adding it, uh, letting the blending, the effect of the watercolor do its work, if you will. Now, typically after the model takes her first break, after about 20 to 25 minutes, I tend to dry the paper um, and layer the next layer on top of dry paper so that it's quite difficult, as you might imagine, to try to control things if you are constantly working wet and wet. I know that some people do that and, and they end up with a different result. But here we're trying to uh, establish some, oh, well, we're going for an accuracy. This is a portrait in a way, and so as a result, you sort of want the portrait to look like the model. and. So if we were doing more of an impressionist, then we could certainly do the wet and wet. But I think when you're looking for accuracy, and a, so there it is, see I've washed off the some of that yellow, and now I'm coming back in. Uh, a couple videos before this, uh, I couldn't upload them for whatever reason, they wouldn't play. Uh, that's technology. But, but uh, so you've sort of missed a couple steps here, but uh, nonetheless, you, you, this, this is, the camera, if you will, or the artist is beginning to focus in and we've established 
the main planes and the main color and now it's time to dig into some of the details and pop out certain features. spending a fair bit of time in the shadow areas. I mean, once you've established the light colors, if you will, there's not a whole lot of place to go. And so now you have to, we have to start looking at the model and create this three-dimensional effect. And uh, uh, since the everything relates to each other in the painting, we have to kind of work around the entire figure because if you add some dark to the hair well that affects the contrast in the shadows and in the lights on the face. Now you'll note that there are a couple spots that I was very careful to leave uh, just a white of the paper if you will showing through. Um, that's, that's sort of a I think a nice element of watercolor is not using any white and it is a bit of an art. Uh, I mean although gouache and uh, uh, some other materials c can be used to pop out some whites after you've filled in everything. I, I, I think it's a much more interesting, much more skillful not to do that and, and keep the white of the paper. You could use masking, but I find that masking fluid tends to give too much of a mechanical look and I, I like the idea that, well, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And you don't really worry about it and let, some, let, let the accident sort of inform the next process and the next step. Again, here we, we continue to keep adding layer in layer. What I've done is I've taken the watercolor from the uh, position of somewhat of a vertical, and, and then I'll start actually, I'll lay it on my knees, work with it on the flat. I can tilt my knees a little bit left, a little bit right, and I can actually uh, move the water uh, and the watercolor to different, I can make it puddle, if you will, to the left side or the right side. For example, if I, if I want to accentuate the fact that there's a shadow and it gets darker as it goes away from the chin, well, then I'll have the uh, paper tilted so that the con more concentration of water, which brings more pigment, Will, will sort of be in the further further reaches away from the chin and then it gives you this illusion of almost like this fine airbrush uh, uh, feathering if you will. <laughs> 